Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Before we begin, welcome to the Coco Club, Callie and Big Brother Shane. I know you've been listening for a while and it's the biggest compliment that you've joined the club. I hope you both enjoy catching up on the many bonus stories And especially watch out for Cats on the Moon coming out in January. Coco Clubbers, on Wednesday's episode, you won't believe who's coming back. It's the Jupiter Twins. The weather starts acting a little strangely over the Leora Academy. And it's up to the twins to track down the wizard who controls the weather to find out what's going on. It leads them on such a magical adventure, I can't wait for you to hear it. Now, back to tonight's story. At my last birthday, my children reminded me to make a wish when I cut into my cake. But I was stumped. I couldn't think of anything to wish for immediately. And I realised that we need to regularly practice thinking of things we'd love to do or have or be. I wonder, have you ever made a wish? Let's take a little time to think silently now about what you might like to wish for. There are some lovely ideas in this story too, as we're about to find out. So hop into bed and get comfy under the covers. Wriggle and jiggle as much as you need before your body is ready to go still. Maybe take some bigger, deeper breaths to help slow your heart down a little and bring feelings of calm into your tummy, chest and head. Breathe in and out. That's it, in and out. Whilst you think of your wishes, let's get to know a little girl called Talia who discovers six fallen stars that grant her six magical wishes. Listen and relax as we find out how she uses hers. This is Talia's Jar of Fallen Stars by Alicia Ainsley. It was a bright starry night and a half moon floated gracefully in the sky. A dark navy blue blanket wrapped itself around the world and millions of tiny sparkling stars shone exuberantly in the air. Nine-year-old Talia sat on her windowsill and peeped through the curtains to gaze out into the night. She looked around and observed all of the houses down her street. Warm golden lights glowed from within their windows and she watched as a couple of lights were put out as the people who lived there retreated to bed for the evening. The street lights hovered above the pavements casting shadows across the ground. Talia caught sight of a little hedgehog emerging from a hedge and toddling its way across the road. She followed the little hedgehog with her eyes and smiled fondly as it made its way into her front garden. She liked the idea of a cute little prickly hedgehog taking refuge in her family's garden. Talia pulled her knees up to her chin and wrapped her arms around her legs, holding them tight. She rocked gently back and forth dreamily gazing out into the world. Her white cat, Bella, jumped up onto the other side of the windowsill and sat opposite her. Bella, too, turned to look out of the window and they both admired the peaceful, still night. Talia noticed a star in the sky sparkling brighter than all the others. It blinked so prominently that it looked as if it was winking at her. Talia closed her eyes and pictured the star in her mind. 
She breathed in deeply and sighed out through her nose. Then she began to recite. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Talia scrunched up her nose and focused extra hard as she made her wish on the star. Bella the cat let out a little meow, drawing Talia's attention back to the room. She reached forward and petted Bella on the head. Bella purred adoringly. All of a sudden, Talia's attention was drawn back outside by a strange noise. She could hear a popping sound. Pop, 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 she heard. Talia pressed her face up against the window pane and looked out into the street. She couldn't see anything that could be making the strange noise. There was nobody there and no cars on the road either. But then she heard the sound again. Pop, pop, pop. Talia's eyes lifted to the sky, and she gasped with surprise. With every pop, stars in the sky were bursting and falling down to the ground. Talia watched in amazement as stars began to fall down onto the path below, beneath the light of one of the street lights. Bella the cat spotted the incredible incident too and was meowing excitedly. Talia hopped down off the windowsill and slipped her slippers on. Then she tiptoed downstairs so as not to disturb anyone sleeping, and opened the front door of her house. She walked out into her garden and looked over the garden hedge to see more clearly. Her eyes had not deceived her. There really were fallen stars glittering on the pavement on the other side of the road. Talia heard a rustling in the bush beneath her, and she looked down to see the hedgehog that she had spotted earlier emerging. The prickly little fella was peeking out its little nose and snuffling around to see what all the excitement was about. Talia was bursting with exhilaration, and she raced back upstairs to her bedroom and grabbed a jar off the side of the dresser. She tipped out the hair ties and hair clips that were stored inside until there was nothing left and she dashed back down the stairs. Bella the white cat followed behind, intrigued to see the fallen stars for herself. Talia and Bella walked out into the street and stopped at the edge of the pavement. Talia looked both ways to check that no cars were coming, and then she crossed the road with Bella and the curious hedgehog in tow. Once they all reached the other side, they wandered over to the street lamp that towered above the fallen stars. The fallen stars lay on the ground, glittering and twinkling. They emitted a very subtle jangling sound as if they were speaking to one another. Talia bent down to take a closer look at the fallen stars, and Bella and the hedgehog crawled up closer and gave them a sniff. Bella got so close to one of the stars that she sniffed a bunch of stardust up her nose. She twitched her nose irritably and promptly sneezed glittery stardust everywhere. The curious hedgehog scampered away behind Talia, surprised by Bella's sneezing outburst. Talia giggled as Bella swiped at her nose, 
trying to get rid of the remaining tickly dust. Talia wondered what to do with the poor fallen stars. She couldn't just leave them there on their own. Somebody might step on them. So she decided to scoop them all up and protect them in her empty jar. She could keep them there until she came up with an idea for how to get them back up into the sky. One by one, Talia picked up each of the shimmering fallen stars and softly placed them in her glass jar. Talia, Bella and the hedgehog crossed back over the road, back to Talia's garden, with the fallen stars safely cradled in the jar. The hedgehog retreated back into the hedge while Talia and Bella went back indoors. Back in her bedroom, Talia placed the jar of fallen stars on the windowsill so that they could see their home in the sky from there. She whispered to the stars, Don't worry, I'll find out what to do with you. Hopefully, I can send you back home soon to where you belong. As if the fallen stars could understand what Talia was saying to them, they started to radiate with a pulsating glow. Talia assumed that the stars were saying thank you in their own magical way. Talia slept that night with the light of the jar of fallen stars casting a cosy glow around her bedroom. They were like the world's best nightlight. Bella the cat observed the stars all night long to make sure they didn't go anywhere. The next day, Talia set to work trying to find out what to do with the fallen stars. Unsure of where to begin, Talia asked her older brother Magnus for help. Magnus was 11 years old, and he had just recently started secondary school. He was the smartest person that Talia knew, so she was sure that he would be able to help. Talia showed Magnus the jar of fallen stars and he stared at them in amazement. He tapped on the glass and the stars began to glow brighter in response. He stepped back and said, Wow, Talia, you are so lucky to have found so many fallen stars at once. You could wish for so many things on all these stars. Talia was confused. What did he mean? She knew that she could wish upon stars in the sky. But did they not lose their wishing magic once they had fallen to earth? Magnus informed her that on the contrary, fallen stars were even more powerful than stars in the sky. He told her that if you wish on a fallen star, then your wish is certain to come true. Talia looked at the jar of fallen stars with wonder. She counted them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. There were six fallen stars in the jar. That meant there were six wishes to be used. Magnus begged Talia to let him wish on one of the stars. He had always wanted his very own bike so that he could go for rides with his friends. And with the magic of one of the stars, he could achieve his dream. Talia didn't hesitate. Of course he could have one of the stars to wish upon. 
She reached into the jar of stars and picked one of them out and handed it over to Magnus. He held the fallen star in his hand and gazed at it, totally mesmerized by its magic. He held the star firmly in his palm and felt its warm, mystical energy radiate out into his body. He closed his eyes and made his wish. I wish for a green bike with orange handlebars and a black seat, he whispered to the star, hopefully. Talia watched on as the star began to sparkle in his clenched hand. Then, in a puff of smoke, the star disappeared. Talia and Magnus looked around the room, but there was no sign of a bike, and there was no sign of the star he had wished on either. Magnus's shoulders dropped defeatedly. Maybe the wish hadn't worked after all. Then, out of nowhere, they heard a ringing sound. It was the sound of a bell. They both rushed to the window and looked outside. To their utter disbelief, there, stood on the front lawn, was a green bike with orange handlebars and a black seat. Magnus ran downstairs and out into the garden delightedly. He whooped for joy as he hopped on his new bike and started pedalling around the garden. Talia watched on and laughed with glee. She couldn't believe that Magnus's wish had come true. Talia looked back at the jar of fallen stars. There were now only five of them left. Five wishes were left for her to use. But how should she use them? Talia spent the rest of the day thinking carefully about what to use the remaining fallen stars for. She could wish for anything she wanted. It was a great privilege, and she wanted to make the best out of it. Talia went through her day, trying to think if there was anything that she wanted. She could wish for a wardrobe full of new clothes, or wish for a new cat friend for Bella. But she already had enough clothes that she liked, and Bella was quite content with being the only cat in the house. Talia had always wanted to learn how to play the guitar, so she could wish for perfect guitar playing skills but she wanted to learn how to do it herself. She didn't want to cheat or fast-track her learning. She wouldn't feel any accomplishment that way. She could wish for a super smart brain so that she would gain the top grades in her class at school. But again, there was no fun in it if she hadn't worked for it. Talia went to bed that night and sat on the windowsill as usual. This time, with Bella the cat at her feet, she held the jar of fallen stars in her arms. She was beginning to notice that the stars shined brighter at night. Talia looked up into the sky and saw the big star that she had noticed the night before. Next to the big star was a new star, one that she hadn't noticed before. It shone just as brightly, if not more so, and it blinked so much that it looked like it was winking at her. Talia looked down and noticed the little hedgehog emerge from the hedge and wander around her garden. The little fella hadn't left yet. 
In fact, he seemed to quite like it at their house. Talia wondered what it must be like to wander around looking for a new place to lie down and rest each evening. That's when she had an idea for one of her wishes. Talia picked out one of the stars from the jar and held it in her hand. She closed her eyes and whispered to the star, I wish that the hedgehog in my garden had its own little house to sleep in every night. In a poof, the star disappeared, and when Talia looked back outside, she saw that a small wooden house had popped up in the corner of their garden, right next to the hedge. The hedgehog was crawling over to it eagerly. The small wooden house had a ramp that led up to its circular front door and a pointed thatched roof on the top. The hedgehog scurried inside and she saw it settle itself down in the dark hole within, no doubt getting comfortable in its nice warm bed. Talia smiled and thanked the fallen stars for their help. She glanced back up into the sky and gasped. Next to the two brightly shining stars was a new one. The third star glistened and shone proudly in the night sky. Talia made a realisation. When the fallen stars had been wished upon, they returned back up to their rightful place in the sky. So all she had to do to return them all home was make wishes on them. Talia went to sleep that night with big plans for the next day and the rest of the fallen stars. When she awoke, Talia set to work looking for people who could use some help from the magic of the fallen stars. As it was a sunny day, Talia and her family walked into town to get ice creams. As they entered the ice cream parlour, Talia noticed a man talking to the lady at the till. The man spoke in hushed tones, but Talia could just about make out what he was saying. The man was very hungry and had ordered some food. However, when he had come to pay, he had realised that he had forgotten his wallet and had no money on him. Talia felt sorry for the man. He clearly had made an honest mistake and found himself in a spot of bother. He needed a dash of kindness in his day. Luckily. Talia had packed a couple of the fallen stars into her pockets that morning for opportunities such as this. Talia pulled out a star and held it in her hand. She whispered her wish to the star and it disappeared in a poof of glittery smoke. All of a sudden, the man's pocket began to fill up with money. Lots and lots of money. Talia watched on as the man's eyes grew wide and he reached into his jean pocket to check if his eyes were playing tricks on him. But when he held the money in his hands, he realised that it was really happening. The man scooped up the money in his hands and kissed it gratefully with tears in his eyes. He shouted the words, Thank you, thank you, thank you, into the air. And Talia watched on with a happy heart. The man was now able to pay his bill with no problem. 
She was glad that she'd been able to use the fallen star's magic for a good deed. As Talia and her family walked up to their table in the ice cream parlour, she caught Magnus's eye and he gave her a thumbs up. Later, while Talia, Magnus and their parents were enjoying their ice creams, Talia heard a little voice begin to sob. She looked over her shoulder and saw a little girl who couldn't have been older than three years old had popped her balloon. It had been a special balloon that floated in the air and it was shiny silver with pictures of princesses on it. The little girl looked very disappointed as she held the drooping string and stared at the deflated balloon on the ground. Talia jumped into action. She pulled another of the stars out of her pocket and whispered a wish to the star. The star disappeared, and just as it did, the little girl's balloon magically reinflated itself and floated back up into the air. The little girl's face lit up with delight and amazement, and she jumped up and down, laughing. Talia laughed too as she looked on. It felt really nice to do so many good things for other people. Seeing other people happy made her feel happy too. But Talia's work wasn't finished yet. She still had two more stars to return to the sky, which meant two more people to grant wishes for. On their way home, Talia's parents chatted about how much they wanted to go on holiday this year, but they simply couldn't afford it at the moment. Talia's mother professed how much she wanted to go somewhere hot and sunbathe on the beach and play in the sea. Meanwhile, her father admitted that he would love to go somewhere with lots of activities to do such as snorkelling and hiking up mountains. They both wanted some time off work to relax as a family. Maybe next year, they said. Once they were all home, Talia looked into the jar in her bedroom. Only two stars remained. She could probably use just one star to help out her parents and give them the rest and relaxation that they needed. They worked so hard to provide for Talia and her brother. They definitely deserved a holiday. Talia picked out a star and held it in her hand. She shut her eyes tight and made a wish. I wish that my parents could go on the holiday of their dreams, she whispered. The star began to glitter and shimmer, and it faded away in a plume of sparkly smoke. Talia went back downstairs. She didn't know how this wish would play out. She hoped that her parents hadn't disappeared already on their holiday. But when she crept downstairs, she found her parents sitting in the living room, like normal. Then the phone began to ring. Talia's father picked up the phone and said, Hello. He listened to the voice on the other end of the phone and his eyes began to bulge with disbelief. Are you sure it's for us? He asked, bewildered. He finished talking to the person on the phone and then hung up the call. 
he rushed over to Talia's mother and explained that he had just received a call from his boss. His boss had offered them all a free holiday to Fiji as a treat for him working so hard recently. Talia's parents couldn't believe their luck. They cheered and hugged each other and called for the kids to join them. They told Talia and Magnus the good news and they all celebrated together. They would fly the very next week, so they had all better start packing soon. Talia looked at the relieved, joyful expressions on her parents' faces. They did work so hard, and they deserved a break. Talia was very grateful to the fallen stars for giving her family this opportunity. That night, Talia sat on her windowsill with Bella by her side and the last fallen star in her lap. She looked out at the night sky and saw that the other fallen stars had returned back up into the sky, and they were shining so brightly and cheerfully next to each other. Talia just needed to find one more wish to make, and then the last star could rejoin its friends. Magnus knocked on her door and came into her bedroom. He asked, Have you decided what to use your last wish for yet? Talia shook her head. She didn't know what to wish for, but she wanted to use it for something good. Magnus asked Talia what she had wished for already. She explained how she had asked for a hedgehog house for their little prickly friend in the garden, and how she had asked for money for the man in the ice cream parlour. She had fixed the little girl's balloon, and she had wished for her parents to go on a much-needed holiday. Not to mention Magnus had got his dream bike. Magnus listened and frowned. He looked at the remaining star in the jar and said, Talia, you haven't made one single wish for yourself. You should wish for something that you want. That can be your last wish. Talia shook her head and said that she had thought about it already, but she didn't want or need anything. She already had everything she could wish for, and anything else that she wanted, she was willing to work for instead. Talia was willing to be patient. Magnus returned to his bedroom and left Talia on her own again. The remaining star jingled in the jar as if it was encouraging her to make her final wish. Talia sighed and looked at her beloved white cat, Bella. That's when she had an idea of what to do with the final wish. Bella had been there when Talia had found the fallen stars and helped her collect them. It didn't seem fair that Bella hadn't had an opportunity to make a wish on one of the stars, too. Talia reached into the jar one last time and picked out the last fallen star. She held it out to Bella and whispered, Make a wish, Bella. This one is for you.
Bella gazed at the star in Talia's hand and its stardust reflected in her glassy black eyes. Then the star disappeared and Talia watched as a final star burst into the sky alongside the others. Talia had succeeded in her mission. She had managed to return all of the fallen stars to their place in the night sky. She was elated. They look beautiful, don't they? She heard a sweet, husky voice say. Talia turned to look at Bella. The fluffy white cat was staring out at the stars whimsically. Talia was confused and murmured, Bella, did you just say something? Bella the cat looked up at Talia and smiled. I did, the little white cat replied. I'm going to be saying a lot more, too, from now on. Talia started to laugh uncontrollably. Bella had wished for the ability to speak. This was going to be so much fun. Talia and Bella thanked the stars for their wishing magic and spent the rest of the evening chatting away. Lots of wonderful things had come from their mystical discovery two nights ago. But the best thing, by far, was Talia's new talking cat, Bella. Bella.